All right, got a Honda Accord in. Complaint of a check engine light and an intermittent high idle. See if we can't get this thing diagnosed and fixed. All right, as you can see, that's what we're working on today. It's a 97 Accord EX. Now, the owner said both of these problems happened at around the same time, and then they stopped driving it, had me, and then gave it to me to take a look at. Um, when I uh, drove it into the shop, the idle seemed fine, but the check engine light was on. So let's scan it for codes. All right, in order to scan for codes, I'm just going to use this Autel AL319. And now we need to hook this up to our data link connector. Typically, it's going to be under there. But on these models, it's behind uh, the coin tray or ashtray, whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure if they stopped calling it an ashtray at this time. But anyway, that's where our data link connector is right there. Now, you can see I'm using an extender. So it's coming out over here. And then I'm going to plug this into here. And that'll allow me to just stand out here and hold the tool instead of having to sit inside. All right, you can see I got it plugged in. And the tool powers up, as you can see, as soon as we plug it in. Now we'll just pick the OBD2 there by hitting Enter. And it'll start uh, talking to the vehicle. All right, once it finds the correct protocol, you can see it talks to our system. And there we go. I didn't click anything, but automatically you can see that indicator right there is telling us we have an issue. If everything was good, we'd have a green check mark over here. That's telling us that we definitely have an issue. And let's just go ahead and click read codes. And we'll pick the uh, stored codes. And there's our check engine light code. We got temperature sensor one, circuit high, P0118. All right, so now the engine coolant temperature sensor, that's the sensor that obviously does exactly what it says. It's measuring the temperature of the coolant inside the engine, and it's sending that information over to our engine computer. Now our engine computer is going to use that to determine what uh, fuel air ratio they want to use. And so it's pretty important. Now let's see, let's, uh, let's hit that, and we'll go to, let's see if there's any pending codes. No pending codes. All right. So we'll go to the previous menu. Now, what we want to do, let's look at live data and let's see what our engine coolant temperature sensor is reading right now. Now, this vehicle has not been run, so it's a cold engine. And we want the complete data set. All right, where is it at? Oh, there's our ET or ECT right there. It's reading 60 degrees. And looking over at my shop temperature, it's 64.4. So that's very, very close to what we're looking at. So that seems accurate. Um, now, how we can verify this, we want to look at our intake air temperature sensor and see if it's very close to the same temperature. Let's see, where is it? There it is right there, 62 degrees. So it appears that our sensor right now is working. Um, as verified by our shop sensor and the IAT. So let's go to, uh, let's click out of here. Let's go to the previous menu. And we're going to look at the freeze frame data right there. And basically that's a picture that the car took of all the data parameters when it had to set this check engine light. So what we want to do is we want to look and see what our ECT temperature was and right there you can see it was at minus 40 when this set. Uh, let's see if there's any other. We were in a closed loop status so the vehicle was using the oxygen sensors to do the air fuel ratio. We were at 1700 RPMs and looks like our vehicle speed were 40 so we're cruising down the road when this thing set so it wasn't at idle or anything and our intake air temperature at the time was 64 so obviously minus 40 out here in the desert uh, we're not going to hit that so that's telling us right there there was a there was definitely an error all right now before we open the hood let's go over an ect circuit really quick because we got to know what we're working with if we're going to try to diagnose it now the nice thing is even though this is an older honda 
anything we learn on this ECT circuit will apply to newer vehicles too. They haven't really changed the circuit too much over the years. Now right here we got a picture of our ECM or engine control module. Over here we have our ECT or engine coolant temperature sensor and basically it's a two wire circuit. So inside our ECM we got five volts being sent out. It's going across a fixed resistor. This resistor is fixed inside the ECM and that's where the ECM is looking. So when we look at data on our scan tool this is what we're seeing. Whatever the voltage is being read right there. And that five volts comes across and goes through our ECT which this is a variable resistor so this one will vary uh, up and down and then the signal will return over to ground. Now this is a ground wire but sometimes you'll hear it referred to as a signal return so don't let that conf um, confuse you. A signal return is a ground. And basically this variable resistor in here is an NTC thermistor or a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. So that's really fancy stuff for saying that when the temperature goes up our resistance and our voltage in here goes down. And I do a, drew a little graph and so here's as our temperature goes up our 5 volts basically being sent out is being pulled from 5 volts all the way down to zero and that's how the computer interprets the temperature. It's just looking at that voltage and saying okay based on a chart I have inside I know that this this voltage means this temperature and that's how it works in a nutshell. So let's go over to under the hood and see if we can find this ECT. Alright now looking at the car let's go over what these uh, coolant sensors are on here. Now there's a lot of confusion because Honda calls everything an ECT or engine coolant temperature and so we gotta figure out what's what. Now this one back here you can see somebody actually wrote ECT on there maybe you can see it that's actually a switch. That's a coolant temperature switch right there. So we got to remember, are we talking about a sensor or are we talking about a switch? Now that's a switch and typically those are just open or closed. That's it. That's all the switch is doing or that's all that thing is doing is it's closing a circuit or opening it depending on what type of design it is. But that's a switch and that is controlling our fans over here. And so once that gets to about 200 degrees, it's right next to the thermostat, it's going to close and it's going to tell our control module on this model, there's a fan control module, it's going to tell it, hey, we're at about 200 degrees, so go ahead and turn the fans on and the fans will come on. And then once it cools down, that switch will open back up and it'll send the signal over to our control module and the fans will turn off. So that's what that is right there. This right here, this, this is also a switch and this, what this one does is when you shut the vehicle off, if it senses that the um, engine coolant temperature is 225 degrees roughly or more, it's going to tell that control module to turn the fans on for like 15 minutes to keep everything cool. And so that's what this one is doing. Now down right here, this thing that looks like it's coated in oil right here, that's our temperature sending unit. That goes over to our gauge right there and that tells us the temperature on our gauge. So don't get confused with that. And then way back there, that gray connector right at the tip of my finger, that's our engine coolant temperature sensor. So you can see it's underneath our distributor here. That's our ECT right there. That's our prize. That's what we're looking at. Now while we're here, let's talk about newer Hondas. Newer Hondas, that gauge uh, sending unit, they eliminated that and they have ECT1 and it sends its signal to the engine computer just like this one does. But instead of having a separate sensor, they just the engine computer along a data line just sends our information over to our gauge control module, and then that is telling us our temperature. So it's reading off the same sensor. And then um, on newer systems, they've eliminated the switches here and here, and kind of as an in-between, they put a switch at the bottom of the radiator. And what that would do is it would control the fan. So you had one ECT. ECT1 and then you had a switch down there and once that switch you know once the coolant was the correct temperature it would uh, turn on the fans that's how that worked or actually it would tell the engine computer to turn the fans on now the more modern design has an ECT1 and downstairs down there at the bottom of the radiator instead of a, a switch they have ECT2 and it's reading the temperature as it leaves the radiator and so it's able to um, 
better diagnose and and keep an eyeball on what the temperature is on the whole operating or the whole cooling system so that's why they use two ECTs now instead of all these other switches and sensors alright now that we know where our ECT lives on this car let's talk about why are we getting a P0118 circuit high and so if we think about our circuit here we know that we got 5 volts going across a fixed resistor and then going across a variable resistor now if we know uh, Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law we know that if we have a complete circuit and we have current flow then we're gonna have a voltage drop after this resistor and we're gonna have a voltage drop after that resistor and I kinda drew it out here if we could see that on a scan tool that's kinda what it would look like similar to that we're gonna have a voltage drop and a voltage drop right that's the way this thing works and the secret is this fixed resistor in here so basically this is varying the resistance on this side and this one is fixed and the computer is looking at the changes in between because we are changing the voltage in between here because of this variable uh, resistor so we know when the temperature goes up our voltage is going to go down so that's all the computer is looking at and the operating range on these sensors are about a half a volt to four and a half volts the computer really doesn't want to see it close to zero and it really doesn't want to see it close to five if it sees those it knows there's an issue it knows hey we shouldn't be at you know whatever zero volt is close to 400 degrees or something like that and minus or a uh, five volt is uh, minus 40 which is what we saw in our freeze frame data and so the computer knows hey we don't want to see stuff like that and so basically up to set a p0118 our voltage needs to be 4.9 volts or higher on this wire right here for more than two seconds so when the computer sees 4.9 or higher for more than two it flags a code boom puts out that p0118 and that's where we're getting our code from and so if we think about our circuit here what can cause a high voltage like that basically if we're sending five volts out and we have a complete circuit we're going to drop some voltage so we won't be at five but if there is a break anywhere in this circuit anywhere along there it's going to stay at five because we will not have a voltage drop because we don't have current flow so yeah if our if we have a broken connection right here or right here or inside the ect which is probably the most common break we get a break right there and that usually shows up when you heat the vehicle up and it gets hot and then we have an issue there or you have a break in the line there and so we want to do a couple checks we just do a couple quick checks to kind of uh, you know isolate it do we have a problem over here or do we have a problem over here and so the first check we'll do is we'll just unplug it and by unplugging it we're going to disconnect the circuit and basically that five volts that's coming out should just be right there sitting at five volts and so we'll look at our scan tool just seeing exactly what the ECM sees and we should see the equivalent of 5 volts which on this vehicle is minus 40 so let's go do that test real quick alright as you can see I got our little code reader out hopefully you can see our ECT is reading 60 degrees and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to probably move a couple of these I might have to unplug this and the sending unit to get um, my hand in there and I'm gonna unplug that ECT so I'll be back in a second as soon as I unplug that and then we'll look and see what our data uh, is reading alright hopefully you can see it but there we're unplugged now see that and we'll look at all our uh, code reader and you can see we're at minus 40 so that uh, that's a good check for our wiring integrity all the way back out to the engine computer alright now you saw from our unplug it test we had 5 volts or basically we had minus 40 which means the engine computer was seeing 5 volts back over here so with reasonable certainty we can say that our wire from here to here is most likely good now there's some variables with that but for the most part we should be good from there all the way out now we want to check the rest of our circuit also and so the way we're going to do that is another quick easy check we're going to leave this thing unplugged and we're just going to jump this wire to this one and I'm going to use a paper clip to do it now we have to be careful anytime we jump a signal wire to ground we need to make sure we know what we're doing now because this is a thermistor and we know that a thermistor has to have an internal resistor in there we know we're safe to do it but on other sensors we would not want to jump the 5 volt reference to ground because we could do some damage to the engine computer or our 5 volt reference circuit and so we don't want to do that 
but on a thermistor we're completely safe with jumping this to ground and when we do that we're going to drive our single our signal low to zero so we're going to bring it over here so when we do that we'll look on our scan tool we want to see you know it reading uh, hot basically a zero should be anywhere from 400 or above on most vehicles and so we're going to do that and look and see what our scan tool is reading and see if we have a hot reading all right so there you can see there's the end of our ect connector i'm just going to take a standard paper clip i keep this around for testing and i'm just going to touch it right on the end there now i'm not stuffing it in there i'm just touching it just so it makes contact just like that and now can you see what our temperature is 419 degrees now now watch when i release it went back to minus 40. so that confirms that our wiring from that plug all the way out to our engine computer is good we need a new ect now that's typical of ect's to start going bad and work intermittently but one thing we do want to make sure of is that our wiring is intact and it's not broken so we can look at that stuff and our terminals in there we don't want them to be spread apart which is why we don't want to poke our um, you know test equipment like our paper clip we don't want to jam it in there and spread those terminals apart because then it won't make good contact now what we can do is we can plug it back in and we can just wiggle we just wiggle the move it around a little bit and make sure we don't see any changes on our scan tool if we did then we can be comp or if we don't see any changes we can be confident that everything from here on out is working and we just simply need a new sensor and as you can see i got the sensor plugged back in now we're back up to 60, well, it was just 60 a second ago, now it's 62. And so you can see the sensor is currently working right now, but I'm confident that it wasn't working at one point because of the freeze frame da data. So that's one area where just a cheap little code reader helped us diagnose this. All right, so you saw with our tests, when we unplugged it, we were able to bring our reading down to minus 40. When we jumped the wire, we were able to bring it all the way to 400, what was it, 419 degrees. And then when we plugged it back in, it was reading 62. So right now it looks like our circuit is working properly, including our ECT. But with our unplug it tests, we know that with reasonable certainty that from here over, we should be good. Barring any breaks or problems with the connectors, you know, in between here and the engine computer or wiring issues, we know we're most likely okay and we have an intermittent problem with our ECT. Now that's why I did the wiggle test. I did the wiggle test on the vehicle. And what I did is I looked at the scan tool and just to make sure I didn't see any weird changes on the temperature and I didn't. So I believe the connection right here is good. And that's why we need to be careful when stuffing test equipment in there. We don't want to create a problem right here. I also looked at the, um, the signal and the ground wires. I didn't see any issues. And so I believe our wiring is good and I believe our problem is a faulty ECT. Now I couldn't prove it on video, um, but I'm confident that what happens when this thing heats up, it starts to fail and the signal will drop out periodically and that's what the computer is seeing. Now typically what I would normally do is I would let this thing heat up if I want to prove it 100%, I would let the vehicle heat up and I would sit there and watch the scan tool or sometimes you can even put a scope and just scope the wire and watch for signals to drop out. And then you'll confirm that the issue is with your ECT. Once it starts warming up, if all of a sudden your boom, your signal's dropping out and dropping to five volts, then we know, okay, there's a problem with our ECT, especially when it didn't happen on, during any of our other tests. Um, but once, I'll be honest, once I saw, I peeked in there and what appears to be an aftermarket ECT on this vehicle, I was already going to recommend to the customer that we go ahead and change it. And they were good with that. And so I don't want to heat the vehicle up because then I got to leave it sit to cool off before I can change out this ECT. So I'm making the call that we need a new ECT. That's going to be our problem. So I'm going to grab a new one and we're going to get this thing fixed. Okay, there's the part that should fix our car right there. There's our new ECT sensor. And there's the part number. As you can see, I have a Honda part here. This is typically one area where I don't use aftermarket. Um, for ECT switches and ECT sensors, I pretty much always go with Honda. All right, in order to get that old ECT out and get the new one in, we're going to need a 19 millimeter socket. In this case, I'm going to go with a mid-length 3 8 inch 19 millimeter socket. You can see these are my mid-lengths. 
these are my shallow, these are my deep. The mid length gives us enough room to get over the end of the connector because you've got to deal with that connector on there and it will grab and be able to loosen and tighten it. If we use a deep, it'll do the same thing, but we may not be able to have enough room because it's pretty tight under there. So this may be a little too large. The shallow will not get over the end of the connector and grab on to our sensor. And so that's why I'm going with a mid-length just because it's a tight area in there. All right, so there's how I have my setup right there. You can see I actually have the socket on the end of the sensor there. Everything's unplugged to give me room. And then I did disconnect this little wire protector here. You can see I just popped it off its um, little bracket right here. and just pop it off. And then that gets us out of the way and that gets us enough room where we can just pop that off. You can see I'm ready to go. All I got to do is break it loose. Now we're going to lose some coolant so I do have a little catch pan underneath to catch some of the fluent, uh, fluid and then we'll have to make sure our system is topped off. Now obviously don't break open a coolant system unless it's cold. So this vehicle's cold. I haven't turned it on. So the engine is not hot. The coolant's not hot. That stuff can spray out at you and um, scald you. So we want to make sure we're doing this on a cool engine. So the sensor's loose, now I can just unscrew it by hand. Alright, so you can see I threaded the new one in by hand, now I just got to tighten it up. Now these things are only 13 foot-pounds. That's 13 right there. Like I said, 13. And there you can see our new sensor is installed, torqued properly. I can't stress enough. Don't over torque that, uh, otherwise, yeah, you strip that out, you're going to be hating life. That's no fun to fix. Um, and of course, we want to double check, make sure our sending unit and our switch all plugged back in. We got our little cable holder right here snapped back into our bracket, so we're good to go. Now we can verify that we made our fix. And you can see a quick check of our ECT data. We're at 62 degrees right now. And... We're at 64.9 in the shop, so we're spot on right there. So now what we need to do, uh, we did lose a little bit of coolant, so we need to top off the system and bleed it. All right, now I'm going to take my Lyle spill-free funnel. You can see I already have a, an adapter for the cap for Hondas. We'll put that on there. We'll fill up our uh, jug here with coolant, which will also fill up our radiator, and that's going to help us burp the system get all the air out without spilling coolant everywhere. Now you could do this without this. You can just either leave the cap loosely or leave the cap off and you can let it burp that way but you're going to get coolant everywhere. By using one of these, and I think they're only 20 or 25 bucks, this thing works great um, at making it so you don't make a mess. Now we do want to make sure that we burp this system because you know if there's air right next to these switches or next to the sensor or our sending unit if we have a pocket of air right there, it won't work correctly. And uh, it's very common to, to trap pockets of air in there after you lose some coolant. That's why it's imperative we need to burp the system properly. And I always recommend using genuine Honda Type 2 coolant on Hondas. Can't stress that enough. We'll just leave the coolant up a little bit. That way there's some in there for when it burps it'll go down. 
Alright, now that we got coolant in the system, what I'm going to do is fire up the engine and we're going to let it warm up. Uh, typically a warm up means the engine, uh, the cooling fans come on at least twice. At least that's the way Honda teaches you. And we're going to look for bubbles coming out. And once we don't see any more bubbles, we'll know that all of our air, or most of it, is burped out of the system. And we'll also verify that our uh, ECT is working. So we'll look at that data on a scan tool, make sure it's rising in, uh, with our temperature, so that way um, we know that we made a right call, and that our new sensor is actually working properly. And we'll also verify that our ECT uh, switch over there is working because if our fans come on, then we know we don't have a pocket of air trapped in there. And, um, and then our switch is actually working like it's supposed to be. Because I don't know how many comments I get is, hey, my fans aren't working properly. And typically that's either an ECT problem going to the computer or it's a switch problem going to a control module. Um, and so we'll kind of eliminate all that by watching our data while we're burping this and warming it up. And in case I forgot to mention, we always want to make sure, turn our heater all the way over to hot so our coolant is flowing through the heater core inside here. And we don't need the blower motor on. In fact, we don't want that on and we don't want the AC on. We just need this turned over to heat. And as you can see, our ECT is starting to warm up. It went from 62 to 80, now 82, 84. So it looks like we're working. And you can see that we have a high idle. And that is goes right along with our complaint that we had a high idle and a check engine light. And if the ECT is not reading properly on a cold engine, you know, part of the job of the ECT is to tell the computer what the temperature is so the computer can adjust the idle on a cold engine. So if it, you know, if it's 180 degrees, the real ECT temperature, but we're reporting it at less than that or minus 40, yeah, you're going to fool the engine computer and it's going to be a high idle on a warm engine and you're not going to know why. So that's definitely a symptom of a bad ECT is a high idle. And you can see our check engine light is still on. Now typically, if you do three drive cycles after a fix, that light will go out, or we could disconnect the battery, or we could clear it right on our scan tool. Now typically, as the vehicle's warming up, you won't really see any bubbles coming out. Maybe a couple as soon as you first fire it up. But as it starts to warm up, you won't see much, if anything, until that thermostat opens up and starts allowing the coolant to flow and that will allow our air to escape. And you can see our coolant temp is at 168, 170 degrees. And many times what I'll do, especially after the idle goes down, I'll bring it up to 2,000 or 2,500 RPMs to help warm it up. And you can see we're now at 179, 181. That's typically when the thermostat opens on most of these Hondas. You can see now that it's fully warmed up, thermostat's open. We're getting all that air out. You can see fans coming on. So we know our switch is working. I bet if we look, our uh, temperature on our scan tool should be about 200 degrees or so, roughly. Give or take a little bit, yeah, 197. Can you see that? So yeah, typically they'll turn on around 200, give or take a few, and then they'll go back off once it gets down to about 197, 196. So that switch uh, under there controlling our fans is working perfectly. All right, the fans have come on twice. Now I'm just waiting so that there's little to no bubbles coming out. We still got a decent amount, so I'll let it run. And sometimes to help it along, I'll raise the RPMs to 1,500 or 2,000 real quick and then drop them down. So just a few seconds on and off, a few seconds on, and that, that seems to get the coolant moving and it'll get more, uh, more of the air out. And of course, while we're doing all this, we want to make sure our new sensor isn't leaking or anything. So you can check there and check down below and make sure we don't have any leaks. And looking at our scan tool data, our ECT has been holding steady between about 195 and 205. As soon as it warms up, those fans kick on, drops us back down. 
our cooling system looks like it's working perfectly. All right, the cooling fans have come on and off several times. We don't have much, if any, uh, air coming back out. So it looks like we verified that our fans are working, which also verifies our switch is working. Uh, it appears our thermostat is opening and closing properly based on the temperature, and it looks like our new ECT is working, and we don't have any leaks, so I think we're good to go. I think we got a confirmed fix. And I haven't seen any bubbles coming out for a while, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the excess here, and I'm going to top off my reservoir if it needs it. And anytime I bleed a Honda cooling system, I will typically bring it all the way up to the max line in the reservoir. This one's a little bit low, about halfway between the, the low and the high, or the minimum and the max, and I'm going to bring it all the way up to the max. All right, now I turned the vehicle off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to erase the codes. Yep, we already know what our freeze frame everything looked like. You definitely don't want to erase codes until you look at your freeze frame. No, whoops, I went one too far. I want to read the codes now. No code stored, okay. Make sure no pending codes. No pending codes. All right, now we got that because our readiness codes are not set. We cleared them all. You can see that they're all going to be, yeah, they're incomplete now. You can see most of them are incomplete. Actually, this isn't a good view. You can see there's a good view of it. That's what it looks like. All these red X's means the system hasn't run because we just cleared the codes. They were all green because I did check them a little while ago. Um, so now the system has to do its uh, checks as you drive the vehicle and they'll all turn green again. Well, at least hopefully. And I definitely like to go in and before I clear any codes, I check the readiness or emission monitors to see if I have any red X's like this. And then I'll know if there's an issue or if somebody's been in here clearing codes before I got to it. All right, caps back on, reservoirs topped off, verified everything's put back together correctly. Check engine light is cleared. We're good to go. All right, now for those of you who stuck around all the way to the end, how about a little more info? A little more behind the scenes stuff. All right, so basically if, when we unplug this, if we were scoping our signal, it's going to be 5 volts. And we saw that earlier on our scan tool. Now the operating temperature, like I said, is between about 0.5 to 4.5 volts. But on a warm engine, on these Hondas, we want to see them under a volt. That's, that's the signal the ECM is looking for to tell it, hey, are we warm or are we cold? Basically, anything under a volt. And on a hot engine, we're typically going to be around a half a volt to 0.7. For most Hondas, that's, our, that's where we want to be. And when we're warming up from, you know, cool to cold, we're going to be anywhere from 1 volt to 3.5 volts. And so... Those are the typical operating ranges on ECTs on these Hondas. ECT1. Remember, on, e on the newer systems, we're going to have ECT2, which you're only going to be able to see on a Honda-capable scan tool. So don't get confused. These are ECT1 numbers. ECT2 numbers are going to be after the um, radiator, so they're always going to be, I don't know, 15 to 25 degrees cooler, depending on when the fans hit them or if you're driving down the road and stuff like that now why is it important you know this ect sensor well the engine computer is using it to adjust you know the fuel uh, to the vehicle based on the temperature because obviously when we're cold we need to pump a little more you know fuel into there so what can happen when we have a, a faulty ect we can have a hot no start you know if you go and i did a video on this if you go to the store real quick your engine warms up you shut the vehicle off go inside come back out fire it up well, the first thing that the computer is going to do is look at that ECT temperature. And if it's minus 40 or reading very low, it's going to think, hey, we're a cold engine. We need to dump more fuel in there. And it may not start on a hot engine if you're putting too much fuel in there. Um, you could have drivability issues where, you know, the vehicle is sputtering or not driving properly because we're dumping the incorrect amount of fuel in there. And like on this vehicle, we're going to have a high idle. So those are some just some things to think about when we're dealing with ECTs, and hopefully this has all helped you out.
a code reader, and a paper clip. That's what helped us out with this one. And as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.